When working with multiple switches, switching loops are bound to occur. But why do they occur, and how do they occur? Well, I'm Ronnie Wong, and I'm here to tell you what the pros know. All right, so let's address the idea of switching loops here, okay? Now, switching loops normally occur when we're working with multiple switches. So for example, in my topology, I have two particular switches that I'm working with. But I'm not gonna really have to worry about switching loops here because I only have a single link in between. Now, the problem that we have with switching loops is that when they start, they don't ever stop, and that can continue to build up traffic among these switches. So the reason why they don't stop is that there is no time to live value on them, so they will bounce around forever between these two switches. Now, because we have a single link, like I said a little bit earlier, we're not gonna have to worry about dealing with that. But let me show you how one does end up occurring here, and that is when we choose to also, of course, not only have the idea of two switches, but also, well, two links in between as well. So when we have these two links here, and we'll just add in an FA1 slash zero slash two, and also over here, FA1 slash zero slash two, now we have a potential for a loop to occur. So you can see that an, a particular packet or a frame can go across switch one, go over to switch two, and then bounce back over here, and then switch one sends it out again and continues on. And because without that time to live, it's going to do that. So how does that occur? Well, the reason why that occurs is because we also have these devices that are also attached to it as well. So I have this particular laptop over here on switch one, I have a laptop over here on switch two as well. So when this laptop over on switch one wants to communicate over to the one over on switch two, and they don't know what their IP addresses are or how to actually communicate with them, what they first do, of course, is they issue out a broadcast. So when MAC address over here with the one, two, threes uh, over here, okay, when it wants to issue out a broadcast, it will send it into switch one. When it sends it into switch one, well, what happens with the broadcast? On a switch, a switch will send it out every other port except for the one it came in on. Now, the reason why that's important is that that means that its broadcast is gonna go across this link here and across this link right here too. Now, when it does that and it arrives over on switch two, well, what will happen on switch two is when it receives a broadcast, it will also send it out every other port except for the one it came in on. So let's just take the example of the top one here as it comes across in here. So when we have this one, this broadcast enter into switch two, well, what are the other links it's going to broadcast out of? It will end up sending it down here to its destination, so that's actually good. But the other thing it will do, because it's on a different interface, it will also end up sending it out here as well. And that now means that this broadcast is now starting to come back across, and it will now also arrive over on switch one again. Well, remember what switch one does. Switch one, well, as you say, hey, it's a broadcast. Let me send it out every other interface except for the one it came in on. So that means that it will also get its broadcast here, but now it doesn't see it as being the same packet. It sees it as actually being this packet over here. So what did we end up with as we started off is we now have a loop that continues to go around and around and around. Now, remember, you're saying, what's the big deal? It's one loop. But remember, we had the second one down here, and it will also begin to do the same thing, and it will now also loop around the other way that will end up happening too. Both sides will end up getting flooded with the idea of these particular broadcasts, and it can actually bring it to a point where that switch stops responding. Now, that means that we have to have a way, if we actually want redundant links, that if one fails, and the other one is still able to function, well, what that means is that we have to have a way to deal with that. So how is it that we deal with that? Well, we can go ahead and we can break this loop here by removing that second link if I chose to. Well, that now means that I only have one link and that link could break, and that's not exactly a great idea. So what do we do? For us, there's another technology that we would actually jump into, but we'll do that in another video that we call Spanning Tree Protocol. With Spanning Tree Protocol, it helps us 
to deal with the idea of switching loops. And the way that it actually does it is fancy and it's a bit more of a process than what we're talking about here. But if you can understand the idea of switching loops and what occurs, you can now also understand the need for us having spanning tree protocol. But we'll address that in another video. So thank you for watching.